Look at me replanting all the trees. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Actually, I'm cutting the trees around here right now, uh, just because they were they were close by. Realistically, um, but I'm thinking of grabbing a bunch of coal so that I can make bullets. We need to so find we that don't acid. Have a lot of brass, but yeah, we really do. So the one quest we've actually been able to do so far hadn't we didn't really have sinks to check. Yeah. Though to be fair, we didn't check much of that. Like we we no, left we bailed. We bailed. I, mean, I miss Elder Scrolls having too many skills. I truly do miss it. Yeah, no, I I agree. I agree. It was it was glorious jank. And the thing is, yes, it was impossible to balance. Yes, you could absolutely make some sort of terrifying god character by enchanting every ring on your hand but why did, was that a bad thing it's a single player game lord valadar waiting for the willow series is that just your you're hoping it'll happen or do you know something willow series oh i like that as in the, as in the uh, film willow i'm thinking and the film willow wow well that'd be amazing I had to look it up, says uh, Kaya Z. But the names were Carmen, Kilowatt, Weems, Flotsam, and Jetsam. Glorious! Thank you so much for looking that up. I love the two of them with the name Flotsam and Jetsam. I actually genuinely do love the fact that the, the two the ones were named Flotsam and Jetsam. That's it's so cute. Right, so I got you 700 wood. I need to come back for some um, noms. So do you, do you want me to leave it somewhere particular, like building supplies chest or something? Yeah, building supplies chest. That's good. fine. And then any wood that we have left over, I'll make into more spikes for around the base. I'm just going to expose this coal vein. And also, while I'm doing that, I'll gain some extra clay as well. Right. Food. I need food. Nom, nom, nom. But yeah, at this point, if you want a game that kind of has the sort of skill progression, as in way too many skills, then you're looking at, of the, the modern games... There's a couple of um, Korean MMOs that spring to mind, though I'm not confident enough to say their names. Uh, but probably Worm isn't a bad one to go for. It has that, that kind yeah. of old Ultima jank super, going on with it. Super, super slow, though. But it's again, not a... the Ultima jank. Yeah. And ironically, other PvP-centric games like Mortal Online and stuff like that do as well. Daggerfall had a stupid amount of skills, yes. But that was what was beautiful about it, and games like it. Is because there were so many just random weird skills, you could end up with just stupid uh, synergies going on with them. Like I said, you know, you could make a god character. Yeah. In in Morrowind, without too much effort, because you could make your own spells, and then you could enchant those spells onto your onto your gear. It would cost you stupid amounts of money. It wasn't really practical within the main progression of the game. But if you're the sort of person who just does every side quest and explores the world just for the sake of it, and does everything you can, then you're going to have the means to make world destroying spells and then make them yeah. basically permanent because you stuck them on your rings i'm looking forward to like just sitting down with the switch and playing skyrim like once i i finish my subnautica run mm -hmm. it's gonna be nice Healing factor two, I can. Oh, I think that would be useful. Yeah, even more 
more cobble made. So many good things. I know, right? Kind of spoiled for choice. I am noticing that we've got a, a very large amount of meat and eggs and stuff in here. Yeah, I can make bacon and eggs if you want, but we do have good food right now, so... Oh, yeah, we do have good food. Yeah, I'm going to gobble in some down now. Thanks. I missed that. But yeah, if we do run out of the good food, I'll make bacon and eggs just to... But the eggs are needed for blueberry pie, so if I can keep the eggs, it's better. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Keep the eggs for the blueberry pies. It's a far better scenario for us to have. But do let me know if it's like running low and you need bacon and eggs made, though. Will do. Cobbles on. Oh, I'm such a dummy. Oh. I need to copy shape. Just grab that, copy shape. There we go. Didn't make it easy on myself. Why would I? There we go. Oh, Lord Valadar! Lord Valadar said it's coming on Amazon or Disney Plus. Here's hoping for Amazon because I don't have Disney Plus. Nor any intention of getting it. I think the thing with getting Disney Plus is that it's um like I already spent enough time watching Amazon and Netflix. So like Someone it would just mean even more time right? was spent not working. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Who is that? That's my witch. Okay, fair enough. Make some spikes. Uh, let's make ten of them. <clears throat> How are you doing for wood? Do you need me to move on to like getting stone or something instead, or are you good for? Uh, I'm doing okay for wood at the moment. Yeah. So do you want me to switch to stone? Yes, if you could do. Okay. Go find a boulder then. Uh, let's pop some brass in there. Now, can I make gunpowder with this? No, I cannot. Fair enough. That, that was hoping for too much. Ah, I'm just going to make some gunpowder on my uh, my little cooking fire. You know. Going to MacGyver some gunpowder. It's funny that MacGyver is in my lexicon. Oh, lexicon, that's the wrong word. It's funny the lexicon is taking the uh, space of vocabulary in my uh, vocabulary. Uh, but it's it's amusing to me sometimes when I say things like, oh yeah, I'm just going to MacGyver this. I've never seen MacGyver. It's absolutely like third-hand use of that phrase. I have just been asked, what is my favorite Pokemon? I don't play enough Pokemon to know. I'm sure you've seen some Pokemon, though, enough to to have some idea of what your favorite would be. Yeah, I mean, like, Pikachu's cute, I guess. Mm, I know the starter ones. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> All right, so if we're, if we're not including the obvious, like, you know, legendaries, I'm going to be honest, Charizard is still one of my favorites, and it's purely because... It's a start. <laughs> I have longer to bond with it. 
It's in my party for longest. And it's completely biased, but it's just the way it works. I'm eating biscuits to get my stamina up, okay? Yep, that makes complete mm -hmm. sense. Checks out. I think we can all agree. That is, in fact, how one uh, raises their stamina. Yep. I'm never going to run out of food now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. Just tote out. Completely it works. Ah, oh, pickaxe. Yep. Don't run out. I think we're going to get rid of this. Ooh. Makes the zombies try to go this way. Oh my god, it's got 1,500 health. What? Bleh. Oh well. Charizard is overhyped. It's got like 12 forms out. I don't care. Oh yeah, Smexy Vampire comes in with a with a fair point. No more than Blastoise, I think. But yeah, you know, you asked the question, and that's my honest answer. Charizard is my fave. I mean, you didn't ask it to me. I just kind of inserted myself into this conversation. But you know, it is what it is. At least it's not the Galarian form of Poncha or Rapidash. I don't even know who they are. Pokemon Go for a bit. I don't know, got a few different ones. Don't re really remember them though. <laughs> My e I had an Eevee that upgraded into something nice, I think. I have seen too many people get way too attached to Eevee for me to legitimately like that Pokemon anymore. Mm -hmm. They've kind of ruined Eevee for me. Well, isn't there? There's one streamer I know of who named their child after Eevee. Some of you may know See, who that is. This, this is what he must really like Eevee. Uh, it was a name before it was a Pokemon. So I, I, I'm gonna. No, give I'm them, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure did not didn't didn't that have something to do with the naming or? Oh, was it? Okay, I'm, I'm well, not sure. Uh, I guess. I'm not 100, percent but I think it might have had a little bit I to know. do with it. No, I'm not going to say that I know that, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. But you know, I think there was some influence there. And this is the thing: is this nothing wrong with Eevee? It's just way too many people are way too attached to Eevee. After a certain point, it becomes unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> unhealthy attachment. Okay, so we've got some stones. Uh, we don't seem to have clay at the moment. Is that right? Have you taken all that to make cobblestone rocks or...? Yeah, pretty much. Right, so I could maybe dig some clay as yeah, well. We, ah, almost ran into spikes. That was very dumb of me. I know. Yeah. Like, especially when they're newly put down, you sort of forget they're there. And you're like, ah! Yep, exactly. So I need to get a repair kit. Do, you think, do, do we have any spare repair kits like hanging around or am I going to have to go through hoops? No, to... but we've got all of the materials needed for them, I feel. So yeah, jump through hoops. Repair kits. Forged iron duct tape. Right. Let me guess, we don't have any duct tape just made, do we? We're going to have to go No, we back should to have basics. like nine, nine Oh, okay. Bits of duct tape okay, made. I will I I stand corrected then. Next question, will Sheila be able to find said duct tape? In the building supplies chest. Aha. And a bit of forged iron. No, 
drawing part of it is I can't see how I'm attaching it. I'll have to do it from the outside. I'm going to put some spare packets in the, like, tool chest. Hi. Right now I'm just upgrading the roof. Though I feel that uh, making that a little bit larger would be worthwhile. Uh, that being said, having it as it is makes it a nice platform for placing uh, turrets on it eventually. Automated turrets. So uh, maybe I'll keep it as is. It doesn't need to be much to dissuade vultures. Yeah, how are you doing with that platform for the robo sledge? You need me to put it down, or are you? Still uh, it, it is ready for you when you're ready to place it down. Yeah, I'll so. come over now because I'm just waiting for the repair kits to make and my pickaxe to upgrade. I've left a few bits of building supplies and stuff in the chest for you. Um, I will start digging because I think we're the lowest thing we are. Uh, we are the lowest on clay out of everything. Unless you as soon as I'm through this uh, metal bar, you can place the turret from inside the middle. Now, the middle can't easily be accessed the way it used to be. So you're going to have to go around the perimeter and jump in that way. I'm behind you. All right, okay. <laughs> as soon as I'm through this, basically you can see how I've placed that robo sledge, can't you? Yeah. Well, it's all spikes down the bottom, so you you, you were good enough. To, you were good enough to leave a path, though. So you damage from the spikes. I'll fix it in a second. There we go. All done. Does it matter which way I, I, it faces when I place it, or does it just turn? Yep. Whatever. It is. It, it won't turn. You have to make it face the right way. So that's right. why I opened it up on the inside, so you can do it from in there. Oh, I see. I see. 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 That, that makes by design. total sense. Right. Uh, I suppose you can jump in there, but you know, not strictly necessary. Oh, we got a we got a wandering horde. Hello, wandering horde. So it needs to be facing outwards, yeah? Yep. Like that? Yep. Perfect. We've got some wandering EXP. Yeah, I'm gonna go and say hello to it. <laughs> hello! Okay, I'm losing this one, so I'm going to switch to the right one. I should have done that first, because it would have drawn all of their attention. Absolutely. Level up. Nice. She loves all that. Yeah, I'm definitely getting better with this sledge now, aren't I? Mm hmm. Okay. With that level up, let's have a look at what we want to do. Could put a point into Bowman. Or I could continue down the intellect path. I could go for an electrocutioner so that I've got a melee weapon. Because it's either that or a perception, really, where I put my points into the attributes. I would like to have knives be. Because honestly, knives are a really fast weapon. But I guess, yeah, sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a point into low voltage. Yeah. 
Uh, where did he get the ability to make? There we are. My defense is here, and that one needs intelligence six. So I guess the next three points are reserved for me. Right, just to be aware, Shilab, I am putting more and more uh, traps around the perimeter. Okay. So do be aware that when running around the base, give it a wide it burst. Is increasingly yeah. dangerous to walk in there now. I shall do much the same around the ladder le leading up. Just to ensure that we're not catching the zombies too hard. One, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Uh, let's go grab you. Yeah, that was made. Yeah, stun batons are really, really good. Absolutely. Yeah, they are. Getting up to electric fence will make this base incredibly strong. But it's getting there, which is the... Uh, Tricky part, that's four levels away from me. There we go. All right, uh, we're gonna want some iron fencing. Now, one thing to be aware of, Shilab, is that once the fight properly starts here. Yeah. It is a useful thing to do to stand at the side because it'll lure zombies around the corner. So I'm, I'm going to yeah. leave those areas open. The only pl place that I'm not going to leave open is the forward middle because that should all... Well, you know what? Actually, you know what? No, no. Screw that. We are going to just use uh, trapdoors on each one. I think that, that'll, that'll work well. Uh, one thing I think might have happened is uh, I noticed I have no 9mm bullets left. I don't know whether when I died and picked up my stuff, it combined into your 9mm. I haven't got any 9mm. Uh, if uh, there are 9mm, yeah. I'll have a look around the we'll, base. We'll but... make a point of making more then. We'll make a point of making more. That's fine. Um... Actually, I really should have considered this before I put those bloody things down, because this is going to look wrong. And that opens up like so. Oh, well. Oh, my really? What's wrong? The bear right outside the base. Go away. Want to lure it? No, nah, I'm just waiting for him to walk away. And oh, right. Well, well, get to the horde base. It's okay. built to take on zombie hordes. A bear is not going to be an issue. Oh, that's a good uh, idea. Let me just make sure I don't hit a spike or anything. That bear is just straight up disrespecting our base. I missed it as well. Just walking along the fence. That is so rude. But at least it managed to get all the way out. I know. I have nothing right. to get, I've got get nothing in the to kill base. it with. I've got nothing to get kill in it with. Base. Right. Sledge will take care of it. No, 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 no. Okay, jump in. Okay, I, I'm I in. did say not to come through that way. But I'm sorry. That's I, fine. Yeah. You can just walk around the perimeter. Isn't it? it looks like it's just happily stuck down there. So I can just pull off plenty of headshots. There you are, it's gone. I'll have a little bit of uh, a piercer too. I'm going to flip on my helmet light. So it's a little bit easier to see by. Thank you. Yeah, it was just attacking the wall. It almost got through it too. 
Let that sink in. That's a 1,500 health wall. Yeah. The beard almost gone through it. Uh, Horde Knight will be in two nights' time. Oh, my footage was a slideshow for a minute, was it? Okay. I'm glad it fixed okay, itself. You, kn you know what? So was mine. I felt a chugging on mine. OBS is not reporting that any frames were dropped, no. though, which implies that the game was stuttering. So uh, that was not SheLab. That was that was 100% the game and or my computer hosting the game. And it stopped the moment the bear stopped fussing over here. I think I think it was the bear going through the spike traps over here. Yeah, it, it yeah. absolutely was. It went through loads of different spike traps, didn't it? Yep. Did it break them? No, it didn't too yep. much. I mean, that the... corner no longer exists as far as spike traps are concerned. Yeah, that's fine. We'll get them. We'll get them replaced. They're there to be used. Right, so... Go ahead and repair all of these. Nighttime routine, go check on the farm. I'm going them. Man, they're taking so long to grow. That's going to happen, it's fine though. We'll get by. She has done an amazing job on fortifying these fences. Yeah, it's interesting how the zombies basically, as soon as I fortify one bit, they were moving on to the next weakest part. So it's definitely yeah. putting them off. That is definitely one part of this game that that I feel. <sighs> I wish the zombies weren't as intelligent as they are, mm. because they're only that intelligent to counteract tactics that players had started to use to yeah. get through the game. They they have no particular reason to be that capable. And so it feels kind of cheap, honestly. It's kind of like when instead of giving like better AI, they just give things more hit points or something for no reason or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. kind of only only this is the, literally the opposite. Yeah. I mean, the zombies they made them too smart. Well, they, they've kind of they've done a couple of things with them. It's just an interesting one. They've they've made them more capable of just demolishing stuff. Um, like they get a, a, a strange bonus out of nowhere uh, to their ability to just break things down once there's a lot of them. Um, let's see, candles. That one needs more plant fiber. So do you want more? Do you need more cobblestone rocks for anything? Uh, yeah, I pretty much always need a few more. Sure. Because I've oh, I've oh, got oh. stones and I've got clay, but is there anything better I could do with it, or is a cobblestone rock the best thing to make? Oh no, cobblestone rocks are one hundred percent the best thing to, okay. to make right now. Right, that's um, what I shall do then. Let's make 17 of these. There we go. Now, my plan currently is as much as possible. We're going to need a load of iron. I want to build yep. a couple more uh, iron, uh, iron bars. I'm then going to want to upgrade the internal spike ring two forged iron spikes because they are significantly more durable. Beyond that, I would like to upgrade to, to basically put a new perimeter wall that will funnel more of the zombies around to the front side of the horde base. Mm -hmm. That will exist only to direct the zombies. It will not exist to uh, for the zombies to walk on or indeed for us to walk on. It will purely be there as a, like a maze, uh, like a trickle feed. Yeah. 
Ew, yet another login. I actually watched a video this morning from someone basically saying, Fun Pips, please stop wasting time fixing people cheesing your zombies. Uh, they figured out ways around your fixes, and it just makes the game less fun for people who weren't cheesing. But now I have to deal with that change to... Uh, see, Jay Tony... I get where they're coming from. They, they have a vision for the game. And they want that to be the experience that people have. But it, it does it does become a, a case of you're enjoying the game the wrong way. They have a particular kind of progression idea, and it's what they're aiming for. And a, a large amount of their, their audience are, are not necessarily into the game in the same way, into enjoying the game in the same way that, that, that they have designed it to be enjoyed or, or want it to be enjoyed. Um, and so they're, they're trying to discourage play styles that aren't in alignment with, with what they're aiming for out of the game. And I can, I can certainly understand their, their, their position with that. But it, like I said, it does f you know, end up feeling like you're enjoying the game in the wrong way. And there's also a, a degree of... You can spend your time making the game better, or you can spend your time trying to stop people from not using the, the or, or rather, like, this use software as, as, as the uh, as the metric. Because honestly, this, this this particular kind of philosophy or discussion was, is more in relation to um, software piracy. But I, I've seen devs who say, look, I can put my effort into improving my product, or I can put my effort into making it difficult to pirate. But I can't do both well. I can only do one well. If I make my product difficult to pirate, it'll become a piracy arms race. Eventually, someone with more time to invest in this project than I have will, you know, I'll make it hard for them to pirate, they'll work their way around that. Then I'll have to up my game to make it even harder to pirate, then they'll up theirs, and so on and so forth. And it becomes a, who's got the most time to spend on this? If this software is your is your um, means of making a living, then you will lose that arms race. Because whilst you're making it harder to pirate, you're not making the software better, thus you're not making more money in that regard. It's kind Someone of like, yeah, with those people pirating that are pirating it, it. For their job, yeah, and there's a lot more of them. Would you they, might have like a development team of, of 10 Would or they be giving people. you any money anyway? If they weren't pirating that, they'd be pirating something else. They wouldn't be buying your game necessarily. It's quite possible, but it, it's basically that there's, there's, like if you, if you do the truth table of, of the, like if I do this and they do try to pirate it, like if I make it harder to pirate and they do try to pirate it, you know, then maybe I've, I've won over them. If they didn't, then I've gained nothing because they, they weren't going to buy the, the game. Or if I don't put effort into into making it uh, difficult to pirate, then maybe they'll pirate it. And if they weren't going to pirate it, maybe they'll buy it because it's that good a piece of software now. You know, and, and I definitely feel that it's basically a cost fallacy. It's just a sunk cost. You will never have enough time to win that arms race as the developer. And you just need to basically accept it. Some people are going to pirate your software. Like, to the point that it should be a, a part of your, kind of, your cost assessment of developing that software. I mean, it's a sad thing, but it's like shops have to factor in shoplifting as part of their expenses. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. With, with shoplifting, it's a little bit different because if someone steals something or, or off a... Uh, off your product shelf you no longer have that product anymore yeah and so that is literally because you bought that product and you no longer have it to yeah, sell you to make your money back no, absolutely yeah. with the software you simply make more versions of the software but what the cost they're trying to recover there is the development time it's it's a little bit of a different thing because there, there are costs it's just it's all front loaded with software development. It's the time you invested in making this software that you weren't investing in doing something else that would make you money in a different way. Yeah. Um, but once you've made it, it's now 
all profit from that. But, well, it's not because his marketing is there's certain other things with it. It's it's not that simple. But you know, after a point, you reduce it so far that it becomes trying to describe the Mona Lisa with Crayola crayons. It's like yeah, you, you've lost yeah. too much detail now for this to be a confiscate conversation. But you know, there is something to be said about the, the difference between stealing a physical item that once you have it, no one else can have it versus taking software when you have it you can still make a million other copies of it the problem is you you the person who's stolen it can make a million other copies as well and that's where some of the conversation needs to be but uh, again it's just coming back to the the development productive effort the amount of effort that someone is putting into developing a piece of software they can either invest that in making the software good fixing the bugs expanding the feature set polishing the feature set that already exists or they can invest that time into making it difficult to pirate making it difficult to pirate and and th this i think is 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 why i say it's it's like a sunk cost basically you don't win that arms race making it difficult to pirate someone will overwhelm whatever me method you use there will never be a way for you to win that arms race because there, there will be a lot more people with enough time to waste trying to break it. And, and after a certain point, if you make it that hard, it becomes a challenge. And then even more people will get involved, even ones who don't intend to use the software once they've broken it. But putting that aside, time you spend improving the piracy defense does not benefit the legitimate users in any capacity. This piece of software having an amazing anti-piracy feature doesn't make the software better for anyone who bought it. In fact, in many cases, and this is very clearly documented, it makes it worse for the legitimate users. They're the ones most inconvenienced by the by the piracy um, deterrence. Yeah, because it makes certain things more difficult yeah. to do. They've got to log into this yeah. or be, be online, online all the time. Yeah, exactly. And all of these other other things. Whereas, if you just invest the same amount of effort as you invested in making this anti-piracy defense into just making the software good, that directly improves the experience of the people who legitimately bought it. And they're the ones that you want to impress. Because they're the ones who are going to tell their friends, yeah, no, this is absolutely worth, worth my money. I, I spent X much money on this, and I would do that again. I would buy more copies because it's that good. I really like this developer. They have, they've got their finger on the pulse. They know exactly what I needed out of this software. It is the best it could possibly be. I see no reason not to support them. I want more, more developers to make software like this. So I am going to put my money there because that will encourage more people to do it because it's less of a risky, risky endeavor for them. It's a big, big, uh, you know, the, the, the results out of that are very, very different. And, and I think it's uh, very telling when when a uh, software uh, when software development goes the route of I'm going to put all my effort into making this difficult to pirate rather than just good. Yeah, some anti piracy software can be a significant resource for Like I said, yeah. Elmia, you are you've got your finger absolutely on the pulse with that. I I, I fully agree with that statement. The best anti-piracy feature that was ever developed was Steam making it incredibly easy to buy software. Mm -hmm. The best anti-piracy feature was making piracy more laborious than spending money on the software. The, the moment the software became cheap enough and easy enough to get a hold of, that pirating it was more effort, piracy started to die a death. It's kind of a bit like um, people with film and stuff like that. They're not pirating because they've got things like Netflix or Amazon. Hmm. But the problem is now that um, things are starting to 
for example, things like Discovery moving from Netflix to, I think who, no, it was HBO or something, is it? I can't remember exactly where it's going, but like somewhere that can't be accessed very easily by people in the UK and also like um, people who had started to watch it on Netflix and things like that now can't get it. Yeah. And so that, that encourages piracy because it's like you've given them something in one place and then moved it. Ow. Are you okay? Yeah. I spiked myself. Yeah, that's the problem with all these spikes we're putting everywhere. <laughs> it's easier to spike yourself. It is, yes. Now then, chat, what do I do here? Do we want... I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this basement room, but it's kind of handy to um, have a place where I can mine at night. Yeah. Just mine yeah. out some stone and stuff. What am I gonna do with? Oh, hold on. You need a bit of a repair. Oh wow, you need a lot of a repair. Uh, I need some torches. It's time to start lighting this place up. So the come hold night it okay. is very well lit. The inner ring is the only one we need very, very well lit. The outer ring can have much subtler lighting. The inner ring, the torches will greatly improve our ability to defend. I'm sure that that will actually make any difference at all. I might leave it. Right, how are you doing, Sheila? What are you up to? Uh, just uh, getting some more cobblestone rocks. I've got loads of cobblestone for you. Uh, and I was Perfect. just uh, doing a bit more of the fence around the base, but if there's anything I can help with at all on the horde base, do let me know. Uh, iron at this point. We need a lot of iron. Oh, I can collected. certainly go and do that. Also need a lot of uh, of uh, more wood because I'm building a rather large amount. Of what do you want first, blocks. iron or wood? Iron, I would say. Okay. Iron it is then. Three, one, two, three. Grab that bit. Create a perimeter down here. One, two, three, four. Let's have this one. Three, 